Let's solve another thermodynamic problem, uh, this one involving a refrigerant compressor. Ammonia enters the compressor of an industrial refrigeration plant at 2 bar and minus 10 degrees C with a mass flow rate of 15 kilograms per minute, and it's compressed to 12 bar and 140 degrees C. Heat transfer occurs from the compressor to its surroundings at a rate of 6 kilowatts. For steady state operation with negligible kinetic and potential energy effects, determine A, the power input to the compressor in kilowatts, and B, the rate of entropy production in kilowatts per degree Kelvin. For a control volume enclosing the compressor and its immediate surroundings, such that the heat transfer occurs at 300 degrees Kelvin. All right, that last uh, phrase here we'll have to interpret when we draw a schematic. So let's do that. Let's um, draw the schematic of a compressor. So we have ammonia flowing in at state one, at given conditions, and uh, being compressed and flowing out at state two. There's an input shaft that uh, delivers power to the compressor to uh, uh, cause the compression process to carry out. Uh, the ammonia is, uh, has a mass flow rate of 15 kilograms per minute. And there's also a heat transfer from the compressor to the surroundings. Now what it said here is the control vol volume encloses the compressor and its immediate surroundings such that the heat transfer occurs at 300 degrees Kelvin. Well, what they're saying here is that if we were going to draw our boundary around the uh, ammonia and the compressor, the system boundary is going to extend somewhat into the immediate surroundings and it's at this uh, uh, boundary uh, line where the heat transfer takes place so remember heat transfer uh, in our energy balance occurs at the system boundary and uh, at this boundary the temperature at which the heat transfer occurs this six kilowatt heat transfer it occurs at 300 degrees Kelvin at this boundary. So we have T sub B for the boundary is at 300 degrees Kelvin. So what are we given? We know state one conditions. Uh, T1 for the ammonia is minus 10 degrees C, which is 263 degrees Kelvin, has a pressure of two bar. And because uh, compressors only compress gases or vapors, uh, there can be no liquid in them. I'm going to assume that this is a superheated state. And state two is the temperature of 140 degrees uh, C, which is 413 Kelvin. It's been compressed to a higher pressure of 12 bar. And it also uh, is, uh, I'm assuming, to be superheated. Now the process that takes place, it's a compression process. Q uh, for this process is minus six kilowatts and that boundary temperature where the uh, Q takes place is at 300 degrees Kelvin. We're going to model this as an open system operating at steady state, and we're going to ignore any changes in kinetic and potential energy as being insignificant. And we want to find the power requirement of the compressor in kilowatts and the rate of entropy production in kilowatts per degree Kelvin. So to find the power requirement, uh, let's write an energy balance for an open system. Um, for an open system, that would be dE dt is zero because it's operating at steady state. And that's equal to Q dot minus W dot plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. But we're ignoring changes in kinetic and potential energy so we can simplify and rearrange this equation uh, and solve for the uh, uh, compressor power. W dot is just Q dot plus the mass flow rate times H1 minus H2. Well, let's go to the uh, superheat ammonia table and find uh, enthalpies for those two states. At state one, we're going to look at a pressure of two bar and a temperature of minus 10 degrees C. And we find the enthalpy at state one is 1440.31 kilojoules per kilogram. Now from the superheat table also at 12 bar and 140 degrees C, 
we can get an enthalpy value for state two of 1757.26 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, now we have everything we need to solve for W dot. It's equal to Q dot, which is minus six kilowatts, plus the mass flow rate, which is 15 kilograms per minute. And I'm gonna convert minutes to seconds here, times H1 minus H2. And we get W dot, which is the power of requirement of the compressor, is minus 85.24 kilowatts. Uh, by convention, a negative sign indicates that the power is flowing into our system, which we know needs to be true for a compressor. Now we'll calculate the uh, entropy production with an entropy balance. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to our superheat table and at state one, uh, two bar and minus 10 degrees C, I'm gonna find the specific entropy at state one it's 5.6784 kilojoules per kilogram K. And at state two, which I'll find at 12 bar and 140 degrees C, S2 is 5.785 kilojoules per kilogram K. So our open system entropy balance is simply that the uh, rate of uh, entropy production, this sigma dot, is equal to m dot, the mass flow rate, times the change in specific entropy minus the summation of q dot over t. Well, we have values for all of this. The rate of entropy production is the mass flow rate, which is 15 kilograms per minute. I'm gonna change minutes to seconds here. Times the specific entropy at state two minus the specific entropy at state one and those were our uh, <clears throat> table values. And then I'm gonna subtract, there is only one heat transfer, so we don't have any more than one summation term. It's Q dot over T, uh, the temperature at which the heat transfer takes place. Well, Q dot is minus six kilowatts, and the boundary was uh, set such that the uh, heat transfer takes place at 300 degrees Kelvin. That gives us a rate of entropy production of 0.0467 kilowatts per degree Kelvin, which is of course a positive number, which it must be for this process to take place. And finally, we'll draw a temperature entropy diagram. So we have our vapor dome. And state one is a superheated uh, vapor uh, and it takes place at two bars. So here's our two bar uh, constant pressure line. And out here in the superheat region, uh, state one is at minus 10 degrees C. Now state two is at a higher pressure, uh, 12 bar. So it sits on this 12 bar constant pressure line and it has a temperature of 140 degrees C. And state two has a higher specific entropy than state one does. And so uh, this process takes place, it goes up to the right so that state two uh, has a higher entropy.